Yo, what's up, boys? It's your boy Scrub Killer back at again with a kickoff tutorial, a very long-awaited kickoff tutorial. So, I've just spent about an hour trying to record a kickoff tutorial, and I've, I've done two, and I've scrapped them both because I'm not satisfied. <laughs> and the last one, I, I could a rank game, right? And I was gonna analyze the game and watch the replays, but I forgot to save the replay of the rank game. So I've actually found this quite difficult, guys. I found this quite difficult to make an in-depth tutorial on kickoff. So this is my third time. Um, I'm just going to keep everything as simple and straight to the point as possible. Um, I'm going to try and just be as straight to the point with you guys. I'm not going to try and waste any time. So we're just going to talk about a couple things. A couple things before we get into how to do the kickoffs. Okay, so number one, kickoffs are your most useful asset in Rocket League to winning. Okay? Most useful asset I thought. Kickoffs are your friend. Kickoffs are 100% skill. Kickoffs are completely fair. Kickoffs are the most fair 50-50 in the game. You're spawning at the same place. It is completely fair. There is 0% luck on kickoffs. Everything is fair. And if you can learn and not be afraid of kickoffs, it can be your biggest asset, especially in 1v1. Especially in 1v1. You can get to high ranks in 1v1 just by having a good kickoff, man. And having a good kickoff generally means that you're good at the game anyway. Okay? So what, what makes up a kickoff? There's two things that will basically decide if you win or lose your kickoff. Mechanics and decision making. Mechanics is... You know, how fast do you get to the ball? How fast can I get to this kickoff? Look, I can get to this really fast, right? So these are my mechanics. Like that. Getting to the ball really fast, getting a nice hit, hitting the ball with power. Just like that, being as fast as I can. Now, the second part is decision making. And what is decision making? Well, if you and your opponent are at the same skill level, which well, probably, you probably will be the same mechanical level as your opponent if you're playing right, then your kickoffs might be just as good as each other. They might be basically interchangeable. So then it comes down to mixing it up, sort of like a fighting game. Cause think about kickoffs, like I think about Rock League in 1v1 like a fighting game almost, it's just mixing it up especially with kickoffs. Yeah, the second part is mix up, mix, um, mix ups and decision making, or whatever you want to call it. Like the choice that you make, and the choice that you make determines on do I flip left into the ball, like this? Do I flip right into the ball? Do I try and force it? Do I try and delay it. You know, these are the crucial decisions that will affect whether you win or lose your kickoff, assuming on the fact that your opponent is just as good as you. Another extremely important thing to know, try and get to every single kickoff first. Try and be the first player to get to the ball. If you are the first guy to get to it, you're probably going to win way more kickoffs than you lose. Way, way more kickoffs. So try and be the first guy to get to the ball. That will really greatly influence if you win your kickoff on that. Another thing. You need to hit the ball dead center. What does dead center mean? It doesn't just mean, let's go, let's spawn on this one. It doesn't just mean hitting the ball like this, like horizontally dead center. It means hitting the ball vertically dead center as well. So completely, completely in the middle of the ball like this, boom. Like every single time, right? And a common mistake with kickoffs is people like will hit the ball. They're too low, so they hit the ball maybe at this point, like the the bottom part. And if the opponent's hitting the ball in the middle, right? All it's gonna do is just gonna fly over your head. So you must hit the ball as dead center as possible, vertically and horizontally, like that. Every single time. And if you can hit the ball dead center, like if you guys can see a lot of kickoff goals. The main reason is probably because you're not hitting the ball dead center or you're not getting to the ball first. Those are really the two biggest reasons why you're losing your kickoff. If, even if you get to the ball second, as long as you can hit dead center, you shouldn't be that bad. If you hit the ball dead center and you get to it second, you will most likely lose, but you won't lose badly enough that you'll concede, hopefully. Which is the important part as well. You, you, conceding straight off kickoffs is, is horrible. It feels terrible. It feels like you've just been cheated, you just been scammed. It's horrible, isn't it? So we want to stop that from happening, don't we? Um, another thing. Um, I think that 
if you're playing 2v2 or 3v3, you want to go for the ball. You want to say, you want to be the guy that says, I got it. Are you the guy that is like, take the shot, take the shot, and lets your platinum teammate, your diamond teammate, your champ one teammate, God forbid your silver teammate, go for the ball over you? So you trust a diamond? You trust a diamond? To hit the ball more than yourself? No, 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 no. I want you to start going for all your kickoffs. Um, unless, if you're playing with a buddy or something, then who cares, but if you're in solo queue, start going for your own kickoffs. It means that you're gonna get better at them faster because you're going for every single kickoff that you can. It means uh, there's more things under your control rather than someone else's control. It means that you can have full faith in yourself. So I would recommend to always go for the kickoff because your teammate sucks. You, you might suck as well, guys, but at least you can trust yourself. You can't trust your teammate, can you? So yeah, always try and go for the kickoff. The most efficient way to get to the ball on any kickoff, your initial flip should be a diagonal flip on every single kickoff, on this one, on this one, on this one. So let me show you an example. Diagonal. 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 I wasn't even, that was pretty bad. Let's try and do it better than that. Like that. Diagonal, okay? Getting, doing a diagonal flip on this kickoff is going to be more challenging for you to learn than doing a diagonal flip on this kickoff or this kickoff, okay? So if you really don't feel comfortable doing a diagonal flip on this kickoff, I think it's fine just to do this. Like that. And I'm, let me show you guys something as well. Let me, right, so watch this replay, guys. Getting a diagonal flip on diagonal kickoffs is such a challenging thing that November the 19th, 2019. And I didn't diagonal flip on diagonal kickoff. Look, I done a forward flip. Forward flip. If, it, if it, you feel like it's too far out of your comfort zone, I think it's fine to do this. I think it's fine to do this, guys, on the diagonal kickoff. Don't worry, just do this. If you, if you can't like diagonal flip like this consistently and you don't feel comfortable, then for now you can just forward flip, okay? But for these kickoffs, guys, you really need to diagonal flip. Please don't do this. This is what not to do. This is what not to do. This is, this is what not to do. Let's try and find it. This is what not to do. Don't do this. Don't do that. Instead, diagonal flip. Now, the problem is, I've got muscle memory so that I speed flip every single time. So let me try and do a diagonal flip without speed flipping. Like this. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like this, guys. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. So just diagonal flip like this, okay? Like this. Like try and, um... Dude, I keep speed flipping because it's in my muscle memory. Oh my god, I actually can't stop myself from doing it. Like this. So just you want a diagonal flip like this, okay? Like this. One more thing as well. I would recommend that you save a little bit of boost. I would recommend you save anywhere between like 10 to 20 boost. Maybe like 10 to 15 boost. I wouldn't really want to save any more than 15 because you want to get to the ball first, remember guys. And you know, did you know that if you boost while you're supersonic, you go 5% faster? I, I think so at least. I think. I think going supersonic without boosting is 95% speed and boosting while supersonic is 100% speed. So you want to make sure that you don't save too much boost because if you save too much boost, you might not get to the ball first. So you, But you do want to save a little bit because if you use all your boost, having no boost in Rocket League is grim, especially if you're standing still. Having 12 boost is basically a godsend compared to no boost. So try and save a little bit of boost as well. Let's find an example. Okay guys, so this is this is the first example. And now now I've sort of explained how to actually do the kickoff. I'm going to try and talk about the not not the kickoff itself, but the decision of where you flip at the end of the kickoff that will affect if you win it or not. So let's watch this. Did I get a goal off this? No, I didn't. But it doesn't matter because I won it. It doesn't matter, we're just looking at this. Okay, so, what led me to winning this kickoff? 
The reason why I won this kickoff is because I I hooked it. And this is what I would sort of call the hook kickoff. And when I show a diagonal kickoff, I'm going to show you really the famous the famous scrub kickoff that just bangs goes in. Bangs and bangs goes in, right? So, I can see what you need to do is you need to look at the opponent. You need to have a glance at their car. And uh, I, can, I can explain it easier when we're looking from an aerial point of view because you can see both cars. Who got to the ball first? So see, the mean juries of basically equal kickoff mechanics. Like, our mechanics are just basically the same at the kickoff, okay? There's two things that basically got me to win this, actually. Because I hit the ball more centered than him. You see that he's hitting the ball to the left a little bit, and I'm hitting it more centered. So, when I'm going for this, in my head, I will notice that Jorius is he's, he's coming on my right. On my right. He's going on my right. So, what does that mean? That means that he's going to flip into the ball going right. Mm-hmm. So if I was to come from this point and flip right, then we would be doing the exact same thing. You get what I'm saying? We would be doing the exact same thing. And it would just be like a complete 50, honestly. You wouldn't even know. So how do I not want it to be a 50 and I want it to be a 90-10? A fire burner 90-10, you know? And instead of flipping the same direction as him, like there's a word did my vocabulary, like perpendicular, I don't even know, I'm not even going to, parallel, I think like parallel, um, if you pa if you do the parallel of your opponent, like the, you mirror what they do, then it's going to be like a complete 50, isn't it, it's just going to be a matter of who gets to it first a little bit, and who gets a more centre hit, instead, we flip the same way as him, and now I'm not doing the same flip as I'm really, but I'm still flipping in the same direction. Um, like he's flipping into the ball that way, and I'm also flipping into the ball that way. And because, and this is a crucial part, guys, really, really crucial, really crucial that you get to the ball first. Because I got to the ball first, like, did I, wait, I think I'm actually lying. I look like an idiot now, don't I? No, I, bro is so difficult to tell. Uh, what? Excuse me? Rocket League, Rocket League is broken. And now I look stupid. My tutorial looks stupid now, because this game is broken. Okay, but I got to the ball first here. I promise you guys I got to the ball first. Even though it doesn't register my hit. I, I think I got to the ball first. Look. Because he's there, and look, yeah, I got to the ball way before him. Anyway, so I got to the ball first, and this is important, guys. You m for, for the hook kickoff to work, you need to get to the ball first. Because what you're doing is, you're flipping in the same direction as the opponent, so if you're ahead of them, you're flipping the ball, you're hitting the ball into them, you're flipping the same direction as them, which almost pinches the ball, but because you've hit it first, it's going on their side of the field. You sort of do this sort of hook thing where you kind of pinch it out, you're flipping the same way as him. You're not, you're not mirroring his movement. You're, you're doing this instead, you're flipping, you're flipping with him. Hit, well, I think I hit the ball first here, but the game doesn't think so. We'll find the better example. And you win it. Okay, and the, the hook kickoff is by far the most effective on diagonal kickoffs by far because if you think about it the way that the kickoff is approached if you can flip the same the ball is just going to pinch to the sidewall and what i'm going to do right now i'll find a i'll find a replay where i score off it and i'll show you guys what i'm saying here we go boys this is an example of the notorious scrub killer score like that okay so let's watch this one more time before we kind of dive into it just like that a goal for nothing wow diagonal kickoffs are like i said where those hook kickoff is gonna become absolutely lethal such a lethal kickoff to deal with so lethal
So we're gonna have to go back. We're gonna have to go to aerial view. Sorry, I'm not very good at operating the camera. Sorry about that. All right, let's just go back a little bit further. Okay, okay. Let's watch this. Ding, ding, ding. Getting to the ball first. Do you notice that? You can. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to be Einstein to figure out that I'm getting to this first. Okay. So you can see that Noli is flipping right. You see that he's flipping right. One more time. Okay. So Noli is flipping right here, okay? So if I was to go for this ball and flip right into the ball, aka mirroring what my opponent is doing, it would literally just be a matter of who hits the ball more centered and who can like, like as you don't know, you know what I mean? It's so, it's so, you just don't know what's gonna happen. But with my method, you really foolproof got away winning the kickoff every single time. You get to the ball first and you flip in the same direction as him, right? And look, I'm, I've hit the ball into him. So now, what, now what's gonna happen is we're gonna sort of pinch it between each other. But because I forced the ball into his half, flipping in the same direction as him. Physics. Physics will do its thing. Phys you good old physics, boys. Your best friend physics. Watch it from an aerial point of view. Hit the ball first. Flip. And if you're wondering when you want to time the flip, it just comes down to practice. It just comes down to a lot of practice. Guys, I've, I've not really said this, but kickoffs is going to take so much practice, guys. Hours and hours hours and hours and it will take you months and months to develop but if you want to really practice fast just do it in free play and play 1v1 play 1v1 especially okay sorry i kind of got uh, i kind of got distracted there flipping it the same direction as our opponent really getting to the ball first hitting it in the center boom the ball pinches out just like that watch it full time again Noli scrambling to get back. Could he have saved it? No, it's not even important that he could have saved it. It's the whole point that I won the kick that I won the kickoff, right? Could he have saved it? Yes, he definitely could have saved that, hundred percent. But you know, it doesn't matter because we scored. Okay, guys. So we're gonna look at the 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 straight back kickoff now. <laughs> this is where things get a little bit hard to explain. So. For the diagonal kickoff and the one where you spawn at the side, people are approaching from a distinct angle, if you, if you get the sense, especially for the diagonal, people are approaching from a, an angle, aren't they? But for this kickoff, you're not really approaching from an, an angle, like, you're just approaching sort of straight on. So the, the whole like, getting to the ball first and hooking it around your opponents, it's actually... It's not as clear cut as a diagonal kickoff, especially. The diagonal kickoff, it's really like a, it's a really clear cut kickoff, if you know what I mean. This one's a bit more iffy. Let's watch this, let's just watch it. So we'll watch it from my point of view, we'll watch it from Jory's point of view. And we're gonna try and figure out why did I win this kickoff? Really getting to the ball about the same speed, same thing. All right, so let's go with Fly. When you know, if you guys want to analyze your kickoffs, I would recommend watching it from an aerial point of view. I think it makes it a lot easier to try and like, because you can see both players at the same time. So, imagine you're me. I know that Jorius is coming from this direction. I know that he's gonna like either hit the ball in this direction and flip left or hit the ball in this direction and flip right but does it really look like he's gonna flip right here no it doesn't because it just doesn't make sense does it so logically i sort of know that he's gonna have to flip into the ball i know that he has to flip left into it okay so what i could do is i could come from this angle and mirror his kickoff and do, do what I've been talking about. You could do the exact same thing as him. What that would result in is a complete 50. A complete, like, you just don't know who's going to win. It's just, like, it is It is basically, like, sort of chance. Like, it's not, but you've got no control. It's not chance. You just have no control, basically. Instead, we do the same as we do the for diagonal and any other kickoff. It's just, 
it's sort of harder to see for the straight on one. It's, it's a bit more difficult. Bit more difficult to see where your opponent's approaching from. When you know where your uh, where your opponent's approaching from the diagonal one, it's really it's really obvious to see, like what direction the ball they're approaching from. So, what did I do? See, he actually hit the ball first here, right? But I flip in the same direction as him like that. And now this is something crucial, guys. This is something really crucial. Because I wasn't the first player to the ball here, even though I did this. Even though I flipped in the correct way. Uh, doesn't matter, does it? It just doesn't matter. So I think I actually, I sort of won the kickoff here. Like, I actually, yeah, I won the kickoff here. But because I didn't get to the ball first, my strategy of flipping in the same direction as the opponent and trying to force a ball doesn't work that well. Because they're going to hit into me first. It just, it just doesn't work as well. So, yeah. Um, I think I've showed enough examples. Okay, guys, so we're just gonna summarize everything here. I feel like I've, I feel like I've talked about this enough. So we're just gonna summarize it. Kickoffs are your biggest asset in the game. Kickoffs are your best friend. Okay, kickoffs are your best friend. Try and go for every single kickoff. Um, hit the ball dead center, horizontally and vertically. You must get, it is, it is your best, like you must get to the ball first. Really, really try your hardest on getting to the ball first. And if, when you were watching those replays with me, you want to not mirror what your opponent is doing, but try and flip in the same direction as your opponent, like, but hitting the ball first, so it sort of pinches with you both, and it should sort of fly out. And this is especially useful on the di diagonal kickoff, guys. This kickoff, right, flip, like that, boom. Boom. You might have another reason why it's easier on diagonal kickoff as well. Because if you spawn on this kickoff, right, there's two possible directions you could hook the ball. You can hook the ball like like going like left, or you could hook the ball going like right, couldn't you? Diagonal kickoff, my friends. There's only one way to hook it. You think you can flip right on this and hook it past your opponent? Of course not. You have to flip left. So the diagonal kickoff is the easiest kickoff in the game to not only win but guarantee that you're going to get goals from the diagonal kickoff especially that is the kickoff in the game where you should be able to get the most goals straight up if you if you use if you're going to use my technique guys and you can even do it like this you know i think people below champ like even below like champ two champ three like they're not going to be going for the kickoff that fast so you could probably get away with doing this Focus on, um, just like that, boom. Just focus on hooking it with your opponent, guys. Focus on looking at the opponent's car and hooking it with them. But the diagonal kickoff, guys, is definitely that one kickoff in the game where you should be able to absolutely dominate your opponents, completely dominate them. Um, and that's about it. I hope this tutorial helped you guys. Um, I hope I've actually been speaking coherent words and I've not just been saying gibberish. I hope that this has been really like, it's, it's quite difficult for me to make this, I don't know why. I just, it's just been complex for me to do it. Because kickoffs aren't, they're not easy, but I hope that I can help you win way more games and I genuinely believe guys that kickoffs are the biggest asset you could ever have in Rocket League. To finish the video, I'll give you a little analogy, <laughs> an interesting analogy. Think about Rocket League like a tug of war or Rocket League as an arm wrestle. Rocket League's an arm wrestle. The kickoff, you just lost the arm wrestle. The kickoff, we've started the arm wrestle again, right? If you win that kickoff, you started beating your opponent in the arm wrestle. You started pinning them down already. and. You know when you start losing an arm wrestle, it's very difficult to get back up. You know, you know what I mean? It's extra hard. It's really difficult, isn't it? So think about Rock League sort of as like a tug of war or arm wrestle. And think about kickoffs or the way that you can start winning it straight off the bat. And you can give yourself that complete advantage. That crazy, crazy advantage over your opponent. And one, one more final thing to say. Uh, I believe that... 
you and your opponent are the same skill level and you beat your opponent every single kickoff, your opponent basically has zero chance of beating you. Zero chance of beating you. As long as you can hit the ball on the go right, that's the only qualification. So you should be able to beat your opponents every single time if you can win your kickoffs every single time, guys. Every single time. Kickoffs are your best friend. Um, but I've done enough talking for today. <laughs> My voice box is about to fall out. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Stay awesome, everyone. The 1v1 content will be resuming. Let me know what tutorials you want as well for after. I'll be working on more tutorials. Yeah, this is, this is probably, probably the most difficult tutorial to make, so yeah. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it.